Hi, hello. We're a little nervous. Well, I'm a little nervous. It's my first ever podcast episode, but um, hi, hello. My name is Sokane. I am your resident spook mommy. I stream on Twitch and on Kick, and I'm here with my gaming wifey, Sammy, for Soki and Sammy's Spook Hour, where we talk about spooky things. All the spookables. All the, all the spookables. Hi. <laughs> this is Sammy. I'm Sammy slash Somi. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thanks to a beautiful spelling error or speaking error, I guess, on my part. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, Sammy liked it. She stuck with it. And here we are. Yeah, that's my other half, Somi. So you have Sammy and then you have Somi. But Somi is the more sassy one. Yeah. Don't want to piss off Sammy because, we'll you know, then Somi comes out. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Today we kind of just decided that we're going to just talk about paranormal experiences and things that we have experienced in the paranormal realm of things. Just random spooky things that uh, we thought would be a fun way to start the podcast off. So, Sammy, do you want to tell one first? Sure. As a child, I always thought, like... um paranormal existed you know like you always hear the stuff but you never really know until you experience it for yourself right so i was about i want to say 12 or 13 years old and we live in this like bungalow house so it was very old you could just tell when you walked in it was a very old house it was built you know different the doors had like skeleton keys like you actually have to use a skeleton key to open the closets or the doors and we actually had the keys for it well i was living with my sister my mother my father and my cousin and her father at the time in this house and we you know as kids love to play and you know do silly things like hide and go seek in the dark and thinking just a normal playtime, right? So my cousin was a seeker and we decided to hide. And we had about like a minute to hide and me and my sister decided to hide together because, you know, to just make it harder on my cousin, find us. It'd just be easier that way. Mm -hmm. We stay together because we were scared. <laughs> so we decided to hide in a corner and my cousin started to look for us and she goes to the closet which shouldn't be locked but as she goes to start to open the door it's not opening and i remember her saying okay come on guys i found you open the door and me and my sister are looking at each other like, okay, we're, we're not in there. So we'll let this go on for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And she's like, okay, it's not funny anymore. I'm scared. And finally, my sister's like, we're over here, Jess, in the corner. And my cousin turns around and she starts freaking out. And she's like, I couldn't open the door. It's locked. And then as... Me and my sister get out of the corner and we go to go see the closet. I go to turn it and the door opens. Oh. Um, this was just some of the like normal things that happen in that house. There's many events that happen in there that are unexplainable. I got stuck in the wine cellar downstairs. Don't know how. It just automatically shut on me. We were playing downstairs in the basement. I decided to go in the wine cellar. And, you know, people can say, hey, it's the wind. It was a draft. But the way it's built, it shouldn't have, like, closed. But yes, I got locked in there before. We had, like, this chandelier thing. My uncle's you know, we're having like a little spat or something. And this chandelier was very secured and it completely dropped and shattered everywhere. So there was just like a lot of like, I want to say unexplainable things happening, which I would say paranormal because 
I can't really explain how these things are happening, but they're happening, doors opening on their own. And we'll just say that we lived there for a few years, but I will say I was very happy to leave that house. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> doubt it. all the spooky things happen. <laughs> but that would probably be like, you know, some of the first incidents of me actually experiencing my own paranormal stuff happening. I'm glad I did because it got me into like really into the kind of stuff that I am now loving spook or, you know, wanting to know the unknown. So this is where this comes in now. <laughs> yeah. Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel that yeah. for sure. For sure. I am mm -hmm. very much the same where from when I was a little girl, um, I've always, you know, I used to watch like Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark? And, you know, like those things. And I, I'm, I'm that strange human vampire that would mm -hmm. you know i couldn't sleep at night so what would i do i would watch goosebumps or i would watch are you afraid of the dark at 10 o'clock at night when i couldn't sleep because you know that's normal when you're a child however now that i'm older 10 o'clock is like that's too early though what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly all right but uh yeah i i know i had one with um my cat and a lot i feel like a lot of paranormal things have to do with like animals and stuff like that and so even when i was little i didn't automatically go oh my god that was paranormal like i've never been that way um i do watch a lot of ghost shows mm -hmm. i watch a lot of spooky stuff i as you know i play a lot of horror games like whatever but it's one of those same. things that yeah that's that's why sammy and i are, are best buddies <laughs> we like the same <laughs> stuff so it just works out you know and mm -hmm. uh yeah, so my cat, Bootsy, I had a cat, her name was Boots, or Bootsy as we called her, and she was my bestest, best buddy, best cat ever, Nella, Aqua, don't listen to that, it's okay, I still love you, <laughs> best cat ever, <laughs> uh, she's one of my favorite cats, and she used to sleep right next to my pillow at night, so I'd go to sleep and she would sleep literally right next to my pillow, and so... She unfortunately got leukemia and passed away and it sucked, but you know, whatever. I want to say for like a week straight after she passed away, I would feel a cat jump up on my bed, walk up the side of me and do the thing where cats like, you know, circle themselves and then they lie down beside my pillow. And I was like, okay, well, it, it's probably Rocky because we had two cats and he was the other cat, but Rocky never came into my room. He would never ever sleep with me and I know that people will probably say oh well you know after a pet dies um, especially if the other pet was close to them or was around them a lot they're gonna look for them they're gonna be like oh like where where did the other animal go but Rocky wasn't there he would always sleep with my mom he was always in my mom's room he never came into my room like unless I was awake and was like come here and then he would like come bother me for a few minutes and then he'd be like hey bye like see you later I'm done. <laughs> so that's just how he was. That's fine. So anyways, for, I want to say a little while after she passed away, I would feel this cat jump up. And so finally it was like the third night and I was like, okay, like there's no way that this is happening right now. So I waited for it to happen again. And sure enough, it did. And I waited for a cat to jump up, walk up my body and do the spinny thing. And as soon as I felt the spinning thing, I opened my eyes and there was no cat. And I was like, all right, uh, cool. So, you know, I thought maybe I was dreaming. It could, maybe it could just be that I was just really used to the cat doing that. So maybe without her there, you know, like you get phantom feelings, you get like stuff like that that can happen. So it could have been that, but I do like to believe that it was my cat saying goodbye to me. But, you know, it just, it really depends. And I know that people are very, everyone's going to have an explanation. And that's why I don't automatically go, oh, it was, it was a ghost. Like, I don't automatically assume that. Also, I was little, so maybe it was just my right. imagination. Like, who knows, right? It could be anything. I also used to have one um, a lot where I think it was a dream, but I'm really unsure at this point. Again, when I was younger, when I was younger, I, I, there's a lot of things that I don't really remember. Um, but when I was younger, my dad 
passed away and I used to have a dream or something where he was my the end of my bed faced my closet which was terrifying as a child let me tell you <laughs> and then my my door <laughs> into my bedroom was like next to the closet and so for a while I would have a dream or a something I'm calling it a dream because I don't really know what else to call it of like a shadowy figure in the corner like behind where my door would open just standing there and it had glasses and my dad wore glasses and you could see like the shine of his glasses and it would just be really creepy breathing like really deep creepy breathing and then I would wake up or come out of it or whatever maybe my dad is my sleep paralysis demon I don't know <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's your dad reassuring you that everything is okay and he's protecting you. I kind of feel like those things are like, it's just a sign of like, you know, I'm watching over you. You're going to be okay. You know, like reassurance type of stuff, you mm -hmm. know, that's how I feel from it. Cause, uh, yeah, I, I kind of have something like of an experience like that myself. Yeah. I mean, I um, like, to, I like to think that ones like that are just them kind of like saying goodbye letting them know letting you know that they're okay mm -hmm. and that like everything is good and to not be worried and i feel like the reason it was so creepy to me was just because i was a kid because when my dad passed away mm -hmm. i was just about six years old so um that would be pretty spooky to see somebody in the corner of your room yeah <laughs> six years old oh but, terrifying actually uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would have been like, mom, help, or, you know, calling for somebody because right. I would have been scared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, God, help me, <laughs> please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would have been a normal reaction for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've had, I've had a good fair few really spooky-ish encounters. I think the only one that I've had that I was like, okay, this isn't scary, this is kind of cool, is... It was the year after my mom had passed away and I was up um, with my grandma in the city she lives in for Christmas and it was just me and her there and for a little backstory on this story so it makes more sense to you people who don't know my mother. She was an interesting lady. <laughs> She would collect very interesting earrings. She had like Christmas bells as earrings, that kind of thing. She also used to have socks with little bells on the heel. So when you walked, you would jingle. <laughs> She's very festive. Yeah, every time she walked anywhere, it was like jingle, 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 jingle. Well, I can't, can't lose my mom. Like, oh, there's mom. <laughs> yep, yeah. there's mom. <laughs> We had these socks, so keep the socks in mind because they're gonna play into the story a little bit. But basically, I was with my grandma, and before anybody goes, well, it's like there's somebody else in the house, yes, but I promise you she was dead asleep. How do I know this? Because she was snoring her ass off. Because that's just what my grandma did, and you <laughs> knew grandma was asleep if you heard the snoring. So, she was definitely asleep, 100%. And grandma's house is like that's funny old. <laughs> well, my my mom, my grandma, they both snored a lot, so I'm kind of used to snoring. <laughs> my boyfriend snores. I could picture like the door rattling, <laughs> like rattling off the hinges, snowing, like snoring so loud. <laughs> <laughs> right. I honestly would not even. I wouldn't even put it past them. They could probably do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So um, when I I went to go to the bathroom, and so Grandma's house is old, just as a by the by. So yes, I am not talking. I again, I didn't automatically assume that this is paranormal, but there's a spot right outside the bathroom door that when you walk on it, it squeaks because it's an old house. That's just what happens with old houses, right? Or even just if something isn't yeah. laid properly or whatever. Like there's lots of noises a house can make that make you go the like pipes, yeah yeah it could sure. be anything so i'm not chalking that up to being anything but i just need you guys to know that that happens so i was in the bathroom doing my thing you know getting ready for bed and 
So I heard a little squeak noise, whatever you want to call it, outside the bathroom door. And I was kind of like, okay, like whatever. It's the house settling. It's winter. It's cold outside. I live in Canada, in case you guys don't know. So it's pretty cold, especially on Christmas. It's always pretty, pretty cold. So, you know, whatever. I was like, it's the house settling. It's something along those lines, you know, whatever. It's cool. It's fine. Didn't really think anything of it. But I heard the jingle of those stinking socks when I heard uh -oh. the, the crack. And so I was kind of like, okay, whatever. Like, didn't really think much of it. It was Christmas time. So I guess my brain went, ooh, bells. Like, didn't even think anything of it. Went, okay, whatever. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Finished doing my thing in the bathroom, opened the door, went to go down the hallway. And to give you kind of a little layout here, when you come out of the bathroom door, you go straight. Grandma's room is over here next to the bathroom. The room I was going to was over here across the hall from grandma, if that makes any sense. So I can hear grandma snoring away, sweet dreams, snoring her dreams away. And as I start walking to my room, I hear my name. We're just going to use Soki in this instance. Um, I hear Soki from the kitchen and it sounds like it's my mom's voice again. I am not assuming anything here. So I was kind of like, uh, okay. So out of instinct, because it was my mom's voice, I turned around and I was like, yeah. And then I realized nobody was there. And I was kind of like, we're like mom. You yeah. Like, I was, mom? I was kind of just like, yeah. What? So I was like, uh, okay, whatever. A normal reaction. Yeah. I was very just like, mm -hmm. you know, if you hear your mom calling you, you, you turn, it's what you do. And so like, I was kind of yeah, like, like, what? <laughs> yeah, like, what do you want? And so I was like, uh, okay, like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Didn't see anybody, obviously. And so I was like, all right, uh, cool. Like, didn't, again, I wasn't, like, freaked out or anything. I was kind of just like, all right, I must be hearing things, whatever. So down I go to my room, get in my room, sit on the bed, look at the door and go, <sighs> close the door, damn it. Because as I'm sure many of us have discovered you know sometimes where you just get comfy in bed and then you realize that you gotta go lock the door or you forgot to do this or you forgot to do that yeah that was basically exactly what i did i looked at For the sure. door and i went damn it <laughs> i didn't close this i forgot something i forgot yeah. something so i was like well shit so i went i was just about to get up mm -hmm. and the door shut like slowly nicely not slam just like a shut it latched and everything and i was like oh and so just out of instinct, okay. I went, thanks, mom. And then I heard the jingle of the socks again. And that was it. I think it's a cute story, though. I think right? uh, it was your mom. I think it was your mom reassuring you as well. Just being like, well, you know what? Merry Christmas, Soki. And, <laughs> yeah. and they're watching you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, that was probably yeah. one of that and the Bootsy story are probably my least scary paranormal experiences where I just feel really like, like relieved and like it's, I feel like they're just telling me like, everything's fine. We are good. In my mom's case, Merry Christmas, like have fun with grandma, whatever. And it was just, it was, it was a really nice experience. And I know that I, I have told that story to a few people and some people are like, oh, well, it could have been this, this, or this. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm not claiming that it couldn't have been any of that because that door does exactly um, kind of like close itself, but usually not to the point where it latches. So my brain was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, it could, it yeah. could have been anything, but to me, I think is exactly what you said, that it was just my mom being like, hi, I'm here, Merry Christmas, like have a good Christmas, enjoy your time, whatever. And it wasn't... It wasn't anything spooky. It was just her being like, hey, hi, I'm here. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I think everybody deals with like something like out of body experiences. Like I personally had a, haven't had one be like a few years back. My dad did. <laughs> a few years back with the uh, COVID and stuff happening. My, I had two aunts that passed away during COVID, mm -hmm. um, the same year, uh, just, um, I think a couple months apart from each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and then and one night I get a phone call from my mom saying, Sam, you need to get to the hospital cause your dad 
something something ruptured and we don't know if he's going to make it and we need to get to the hospital because the doctor doesn't know like the percentage is very slim that he's going to make it through the surgery Mm -hmm. so this is all during covid and um you know restrictions so we could only do so much i mean i could be at the hospital but i couldn't be in the room in the hospital right yeah so oh my your mic doesn't want you to talk today oh Hi, Sammy. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome the back. World sent me back to my world. <laughs> <laughs> it sent me is like you're going, you're banished to your world. Go you're back. banished Bye-bye. to the shadow realm. <laughs> it did. All of a sudden, I was like, okay, I'm back at my world. Nice. The <laughs> shadow. I went to the shadow realm. She went to the shadow yeah. realm. <laughs> For surgery. He pulled through. Everything was good. I remember being there and getting the phone call from him. And instantly he heard my voice. He started crying. Uh, You know, I was crying. We were just happy that he was, you know, alive. He pulled through and he was strong. But he told me he had to tell me something because he said that he remembered, like, it was very foggy. He remembers seeing you know, his body being operated on, which I was like, oh my God, it was like an out of body experience. And he he was about to leave this world, but his mother appeared and she told him that Johnny, I love you and I have your sisters with me, but this is not your time. You need to go back to your family, and we've already had enough heartache this year. You need to go, you know, be with your family and be with your loved ones, and when it's your time, I'll be waiting for you. And he was very close to his mother, so he was very emotional. It was very, you know, it's just, you know, his mom has been passed away for years now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this was just... He came back and he's like, you know, this is a wake up call. Thankful to be alive. But, you know, it was just very heartwarming to see his mom. And it's just it's crazy for me because to think like people can have these like out of body experiences like that. He was actually said that he could see himself on the operating table and he was leaving this world. And to say my grandmother shows up and is like, I love you son what is not your time to go and your sisters are here with me now and you know we don't want any more heartache right now we had enough this year you need to go back to your family it's just it's just crazy because some people would be like oh maybe he was just dreaming maybe Mm -hmm. this wasn't real but to him it felt real and to him he he swears by everything it was real and he fully believes that this was not his time to go and that's why he's back but he said it was Something that he could never, ever, like, truly explain. Like, you know, like, he just said that, you know, it was a relief to be able to talk to his mom. Comfort. Because he always wondered, you know, like, he always wanted to say, because you never get to say your goodbyes to your loved ones properly, you know, Mm -hmm. because you never know when they're going to go. And he said, like, this was, like, the opportunity to be, like, you know, to tell his mom, like, I love you and that, you know, when the time is right or, you know, we'll be together again. And it's just, I was emotional. He was emotional. We were both sobby mess, like, oh, crying. You know? And in a way, I felt like it changed my dad. Yeah. In a good way. In a positive way. It changed his outlook at life. So... You know, you never know. You never know what's going to happen in the afterlife. You never know where you're going to go. It was very interesting for him to have some type of experience like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how I would feel if something like that happened to me. I don't know how I would react to something like that. I know know, it's different. You know, I've had surgery where you go under and it's a different feeling. But Mm -hmm. I know it has nothing to, like, it can't be, like, like, the same experience of having, like, an out-of-body experience. So. Yeah, I know that. Very interesting. When my grandma was in the hospital, um, she didn't have an out of body experience. But it's interesting how people are like before they pass away. Like if you know that they're not gonna make it, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. My grandma mm-hmm. was one of those cases where we knew that 
she had i can't even remember she had some sort of an infection and it was just like if we if we treat her the treatment's gonna kill her basically yes the day before my aunts would go see her um so like her daughters would go see her and then me and my cousin would go later to go see her and that day we were told like don't go see her um she's acting like really weird and whatever and i was told afterwards i I'm not really sure why i wasn't told at the time but i was told afterwards that she was lying in her bed and she was like looking up at the ceiling and she was talking to my mm -hmm. mom and her husband both of which are passed before her and um, she was yeah. like telling uh telling them that she was like coming soon and like whatever and it's just like that's crazy to me like it's just i i watch a lot of like um there's a nurse that i watch um that makes youtube shorts and she she's a hospice nurse so she sees a lot of this and she mm -hmm. said that there are many mm -hmm. many a times where people will say like that they aren't ready to go and then like a little while later they uh, a deceased family member will basically come get them and it's like that is craziness yes. to me like it's cool Ooh, that gives me chills <laughs> i know right like that's crazy but like at the same time it's just like dang like that's really cool and like kind of heartwarming but also really creepy at the same time <laughs> yeah a scary too mm -hmm. um my grandmother was like that my grandma had a tumor on her brain and she had slipped and fell Oh, no. And it was kind of almost like your grandma's situation where, like, if they operate um, and they relieve that pressure with the, like, she was very old, so this she wouldn't make it, they were basically saying, because, like, she's too weak and frail and they were afraid that she was going to pass an operating table. So they said there's nothing much they could do and that they could just keep her comfortable at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Well, coming up to her last like day or so before passing you know how they make that noise kind of like like when they have their mouth open and they're breathing their breathing gets deeper and stuff because like i was really close to my grandma so i went to the hospital all the time like you know during that time to see her and read her last book pages of her book that she had because she was a big reader that's where i get it from mm. so i remember sitting there and reading the last of her book to her and during the last day or so of her before her passing, she kept looking up at the corner like you would see, like she'd just be like looking and gazing. And I'm like, that's my grandfather coming to get her. Like, I knew it. Like, I knew like she was going to pass because I'm like, or it's the angels or something, you know, mm -hmm. like, cause she kept looking up and you could see that she was just gazing. And I'm like, and I just kept reassuring her, like, you know, grandma, if you see a light or you see somebody there, go ahead and, and rest. It's okay. I, she was a big family oriented person. So she kept our family together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why she was trying to fight for so long, like to stay, like she just didn't want to just go. Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, no, you can go, you can rest now. No, like, you know, the family's going to be okay. And I remember I went downstairs for a second and i remember getting that phone call hurry up hurry up grandma my grandma had passed oh wow so in that short amount of time she did pass but she was looking i remember her looking up and gazing in the corner so i definitely do believe as you're passing there is it's either family members coming to get you or an angel taking you to wherever you need to go where your final resting place is but i am a big firm believer in that because i i watched how my grandma passed away you know and mm -hmm. it was very similar to like what you were saying with your grandmother doing insane so yeah it's crazy it, it's it's crazy but it's it like is. it's really like heartwarming at the same time it's like oh <laughs> yeah yeah for sure for sure yeah and uh it's crazy it's crazy how you know everybody has their own experiences with um death right mm -hmm. yeah for <laughs> As sure you would say we can only hope like for the best right when situations are like that that there is somebody coming to take them to like rest <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um, paranormal stuff is is very interesting it, it has yeah. its own like 
little perks. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's it's its own realm of craziness for the people that believe in what you want to believe in you know believe in whatever you want to believe in you know like mm. i know there's non-believers that don't believe anything like stuff like this exists and mm. that's fine too but like for the people that do and like this stuff then like i'm glad that there's things out here like that where people can share their experiences you know yeah and i feel like a lot of the paranormal stuff can be really comforting like mm -hmm. we've sh we've basically shared a bunch of paranormal stories but they're not necessarily scary they're they're heartwarming in a way because like with your dad he was told like it's not your time mm -hmm. go back to your family with my grandma it was like oh like her family members are waiting for her um or like even with my mom being like hey exactly. like i'm gonna close the door for you <laughs> and so you know just like stuff like mm -hmm. that but have you had any that are like super scary where you're like oh my god get me out of here so, yes, I have. So, um, I was renting this house and I have a son and his father would work nights and I would be home alone with him. And as much as like, I try to ignore things that happened like sometimes you just can't right like they're bluntly like happening to you in your face and it's like hey listen to me like we're <laughs> you know we're here we're making we're making noise for this reason right yeah so my son's toys would go off at night and of course people would be like oh well it's battery operated take the batteries out and i did i i mean there was toys that would go off in the night and I would just be like, okay, I'm not going out there to look at any of this stuff. Like, I'm super terrified. I think it was, like, the fact that I was scared was the unknown, like, of, like, what is causing it to go off, you know? Yeah. For sure. And the fact that, like, you know, we rented this house, so I don't know who lived in the house before me. So, like, you know, I have no clue, like, what's going on or what it is. That's, like, what the unknown is. And so, like, I think with my son being a small child and I was just scared. <laughs> so I would literally lay there at night with the cover over my head and be like, just stop, just stop, just, just stop, please stop, just stop. Or, like, try, yeah, or play music or something because I think I was just scared you know mm -hmm. i was just scared of what i was gonna see or like because like your mind sometimes plays tricks on you too like you see something that you think is there but it is really not you know and mm -hmm. i just didn't want to give myself that opportunity to be like oh there's something in the corner like Ooh. you know super scare myself being home alone you know yeah for sure. So I think that was like the most for me that would scare me the most because like I said his toys would always go off and there was like no explanation. But after it, it's weird because like after I moved into my new house, I it, it's quiet. Like I don't have any like things that go off. I don't have like unexplainable like you know, lights or anything happening. So I really felt like it has something to do with that house because I felt like if it if it wasn't, I would continue experiencing it here. And I do not. It's nice and peaceful here. <laughs> That's so good. It's thing. nice and quiet. Yeah. Yeah. There's no bump in the night. There's no spooky <laughs> things. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good thing. I feel yeah. like one of my scariest things second holy <laughs> shit i'm not i'm not bored <laughs> i need to preface i am not bored uh, apparently i'm tired or She's i need tired, oxygen i have no idea what's going on <laughs> 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 but anyway uh don't mind my yawn sorry um i think one of my scariest again like this stuff doesn't really spook me that much um but probably one of my scariest times was I also used to work overnights. Um, for a very long span of my life, I worked for McDonald's. And so I worked at McDonald's and I would do the night shift, which I think was 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., I want to say. But I might have done like some 10 to 6s kind of thing. Anyway, so basically my, my day would consist of I would basically sleep, 
from the time I got home to about 9 p.m. that I'd get up, I'd do whatever I needed to do to get ready for work or, you know, whatever. I'd go to work and then I'd come home and sleep all day again. And this really did tire me yeah. out, um, mostly because, you know, when it's light outside, you want to be awake. So yes. a lot yes. of the time when I would come home, you know, it'd be like between 7, 30, 8, 9, depending. And so I would want to be awake because it was sunny outside. And it was very, very difficult mm -hmm. for me to continue with life um, for quite a long time because it would be like I would go try and do something that would keep me awake, but then I'd eventually get so tired I'd just crash because <laughs> I was up all night. So um, mm -hmm. one of the things I experienced the entire time I was working nights, though, is this nightmare now everybody hear me out because i know some people are going to be like well that's not paranormal hold on it gets freaky so i used to have this night like yeah. sleep paralysis right sort of yeah so like i wouldn't it wasn't like i couldn't move and it wasn't like i was awake like i'm pretty positive at least for this part of the story it was in fact a dream but i would see mm -hmm. this shadow in the corner of my room and it, oh, would, no. it, was just, it was just like, it wasn't even really a person. It was just like this black mass of shadow in the corner of my room. And I don't even, rem I, like, I can't even tell you what the dream was. I just know that thing was there. And I would just have the worst nightmares of my life. Like, I would wake up with my throat being sore because I was screaming like really bad nightmares that I don't think I've ever mm -hmm. had before or since, to be fair. Um, so, you know, I was kind of like, okay. And again, I'm sure people are going to be like, oh, well, that could just be whatever. And maybe it was just the fact that I was on nights. I don't know. However, as mm -hmm. the story progresses, I think y'all might see how it could be a little paranormal. <laughs> so um, this was happening for a while. And basically it started getting to the point of I would see this thing while I was awake in the corner of my room and if I saw it before I fell asleep then I would have the really bad nightmare but if I didn't see it that night at all or if I just didn't see it before I went to bed I was fine and so I was kind of like okay like weird and so mm. we at this point I was with my boyfriend Scary. we yeah we lived in like a I don't know what the fuck you want to call it, where someone lives on one side and someone lives on the other side, like a duplex. I don't know what the fuck they're called anymore. I'm pretty yeah, sure they, duplex. yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. they used to be called a duplex. I don't know if they're still called that, but basically, one person lives on one side, a one person flat. lives, yeah, okay, or or that, yeah. So something yeah. like yeah. that, where mm -hmm. one person lives on one side and one one person lives on the other side. We had like a connecting backyard, mm -hmm. like patio thingy. Um, basically, if you wanted to go to mm -hmm. her side of the house, you went to one side. If you wanted to go to her side of the house, you go to the other side. Like, that kind of thing. And so, she lived on the other side. And I don't know why, but she was also very into the paranormal. So, we'd get talking about paranormal stories and stuff like that. Um, kind of one of the only things I liked about her, to be honest. Um, but she was not a very nice lady. Let me just, uh, throw that out there. That's a story for another time, though. Um, but basically we started talking and I, I was telling her about this and it was really freaking me out because I obviously was waking up from these nightmares. I'd wake up in the middle of the day. I'd be confused as fuck because it's like noon and my body's like, you should be awake. But, you know, I shouldn't be because I work overnights and whatever. So we did a bunch of random stuff. I don't know if any of it worked. I don't know if what she told me was true. So I'm going off what she told me, not saying that any of this is true. I need you all to hear that right now. I'm not saying that anything that came out of her mouth was true because I don't know. However, whatever the hell she did, it worked. And I'll get to that in a second. So there was one night where we were talking about the shadow thing and she was like trying to think of ways that she could do something or that I could do something that would maybe help me because at this point I'm getting to the point of like I'm not sleeping very well at all 
Plus, I'm working overnights, and working overnights really fucks you up. Like, it really does. Or, or like... It's draining. It's yeah. very draining. It's draining. Yeah. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. like if you stay up all night, like, you know, it's, it fucks with you. And yeah. so, I, we were talking about it, and she was talking about, like, I, you see in all the, sh all the paranormal shows that salt is, like, one of the main things that's supposed to, like, repel evil. I, I don't know if it works. And sage. Yes, and mm -hmm. sage as well. I don't know if it works. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm not saying it does. I have no idea. So basically what we started doing is putting little salt lines at every open door and every window, like on the windowsill. And she's like, just see what that does. And I was kind of like, okay. So at this point I was kind of like, oh, mm -hmm. like, I don't know how I feel about that. However, <laughs> I will tell you that I think we pissed whatever the hell it was off. Because one night I went to go downstairs because our bedroom was downstairs. So, like, we had a main floor and a downstairs. So, it was like a bungalow, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I went down the stairs and I went into the bathroom. And my, my bedroom was at the end of the hallway, like the very end. And so, I went to go past it. And we had, like, a... I don't know what the fuck you want to call it. Uh, like, a Harry Potter cupboard under the stairs. But, like, you could stand in it. <laughs> not just sit in it but it was basically like a storage room and i don't know what the hell was up with that storage room but for the longest time after this whole thing started with the shadow thing i was scared to walk past it like i would run past it to get to my room and i never as far as i remember i don't ever remember seeing anything except for the one time where it was like standing in the hallway outside my bedroom and i was like bitch nah <laughs> but whatever we we did our thing so we were doing stuff with the salt and whatever and i think we made it mad because uh that night that i didn't work and i went to bed at a normal time because i was so tired all the time i had probably one of the worst nightmares i've ever had in my entire life i don't remember what it was about thank god but i know that it was really bad and so the next night i was hanging out with his mom again and we were chilling in her basement and um we were talking about like my dad because she was like oh like do you have any do you think like anybody is um like with you like protecting you whatever and i was like oh like probably my parents like who knows and so she's like okay mm -hmm. fair and so we we're just like talking about paranormal stuff again and all of a sudden she had this this um if you guys know what an earring tree is um where you literally hang your earrings on it and it can look like a tree it doesn't always hers did look like a tree if you don't know what i'm talking about um google it <laughs> but basically it's just a tree where you hang your earrings you could hang your rings on it too i guess it doesn't necessarily need to be earrings um but anyways we we're talking about my dad and one of her earrings out of fucking nowhere there was no draft just started moving on the tree and i was kind of like oh Alrighty then. And again, I don't automatically assume things are paranormal, as I've told you guys. So I'm kind of looking at it going, well, that's interesting. And so like I point to it. And so his mom looks right. at it and she goes, oh, like maybe it's just somebody visiting, whatever. So anyways, making a very long story short, um, this thing was spooky. Um, I have no idea where I got it from uh, or anything like that but we did a i don't know what you would want to call it a ritual i guess a, um, a cleansing a cleansing yeah so we did like a cleansing where basically we sat there um she instead of using like a ouija board or anything like that she had a pendulum and she was talking to my dad supposedly through it asking if i was there if he was there to like protect me and whatever and um basically like asked the white light or whatever to get this thing away from me and um whatever and after we did whatever you want to call that um everything was better i my nightmare slowed down to a complete halt i didn't see the shadow thing anymore we left the salt up for a long time until we finally got rid of it um but uh yeah, it was it was um really
scary. Um, and I know that a lot of people are going to hear that story and be like, there's no way that that happened. But I promise you, I'm not just making this shit up. Um, it was it was really weird. And I like there's a lot of things that I know that you can supposedly attract by being as obsessed with horror as I am. Um, and I used to watch a lot of nobody yell at me. I used to watch a lot of like Ouija board videos <laughs> when I was a young like negativity, like yeah, and like I think I think I was negativity is thing is something that like I feel like bad spirits are very drawn to, and because I wasn't sleeping well, mm -hmm. because I was already not really okay because of the overnights and stuff i think it was taken advantage of it that. took advantage of it and whether it came at me through a video or if i just had too much negativity and it just drew drew it to me i don't know and god we got rid of it i've never seen anything like that again thank god uh but it was very scary um and probably one of the scariest experiences i have ever had like most of my paranormal experiences I am trying to talk to somebody I know, so it's never mm -hmm. really that scary. I've only used a Ouija word one time, and it did nothing. <laughs> Literally nothing. Like, didn't move. Nothing. Um, then, uh, so, like, I've only ever used it once. I said goodbye. I didn't play alone. I followed all the rules. I went in with good intentions. You know, I did all the things that you're supposedly supposed to do if you're going to use one at all and i've never had anything since then but it was it was definitely really really Horrifying. spooky yeah it was just really scary and then having the nightmares on top of it just really fucked my poor little brain up <laughs> and i was very yeah just like what is happening <laughs> Well, it's it's always like being afraid of the unknown, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know what that is, and we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know, like, is this going to, is it just something that's there? Is it going to harm me? Like, what is, like, the cause and effect from it, you know? Yeah. But uh, I totally, I totally get where you're coming from because um, my son's father's sister had something like um an incident like you did a little different she had sleep paralysis because she was working overnights and you don't sleep very well and like you said you're always exhausted you're tired you never get enough sleep you want to sleep all the time mm -hmm. you're very sleep deprived in the process of things right yeah because like your body is not your body is not used to being up at that time of night, right? Yeah, it exactly. Doesn't, it, it doesn't ever really fully adjust to that kind of time frame. Mm -hmm. um, well, she just, she couldn't. She couldn't adjust to it, but she had been working the night shift for a good few years, but she finally started looking for another job. And what pushed her to that is one night, she started having like dreams that she felt were that just kept reoccurring and it just kept getting darker and darker and in, in like her body being asleep but she's awake kind of thing mm -hmm. so it started off slow where you know it it would be like she would see something in her room and it oh. wouldn't be there like she would just like look and glance and then it was gone you know and then it started progressing until where she couldn't move her body, but she could see things around her, but she couldn't physically move. And then the this whatever you want to say say that she's seen started getting closer to her. Oh god! So it got to the point where it was getting too close to her, where it was progressing every night, where it's getting too close to her, where she just couldn't take it, and she was terrified to sleep. Mm -hmm. So finally, what she did is she ended up getting a different job and 
and going back to days and thank god after doing that she changed her schedule she doesn't have like those reoccurring dreams anymore where she can't move but could you imagine being in your sleep and knowing that everything is going around you but you can't do anything to wake yourself up or move or you see this terrifying thing each day getting closer to you but you can't do anything to stop it like that for me when i heard that story from her i was just like you know what i would have had uh, a priest come in i would have had a cleansing i would have had holy water next to my bed you know because like i i could only imagine what she was going through but yeah i i would never want to work the night shift just because of reasons like that like not adjusting having a you know very weird sleep schedule you know Mm -hmm. yeah super powerful things <laughs> yeah like your brain is very powerful and i'm gonna straight up say that i very wholeheartedly and i know sammy feels the same we both very wholeheartedly believe in the paranormal but i know that there's gonna be people out there mm-hmm. you know saying oh well especially with that last story both sammy's and mine that you know oh well you guys weren't sleeping properly so like how do you know and it's like i don't know i don't my Mm. brain is a very powerful powerful little mushy thing in my head and maybe maybe it was a trick maybe i was hallucinating maybe i was going crazy who knows pretty sure i'm pretty sane (laughs) for the most part anyway Mm -hmm. but i would say so (laughs) oh well thanks (laughs) I'm glad you think so. (laughs) But, you know, so, like, I just want to put it out there that I I can't speak for Sammy, but I understand you skeptics, you people out there that don't believe in that kind of stuff. And, like, you can believe in whatever you want to believe. And if you just want to listen to these stories because you think they're interesting, that's cool. If you want to listen to them because you are also a believer, awesome. If you want to listen to them to even just, like, sit there and be like, there's no way that happened. You do you um the only thing i ask is that there Mm -hmm. is no negativity and please don't start any fights in the comments or you know go after anyone else's religion or belief system or whatever just listen to the stories comment if you want to comment but follow what thumper says and if you don't got nothing nice to say don't say nothing at all okay okay exactly and if you i want to just say this if you have stories of your own experiences i know i would love to hear your stories you know yeah, me too you, you know if you want to share with us i'm I'm sure silky would love to hear it too we would love to hear your paranormal experiences too because we we love that kind of stuff so be you know be free to like share your experiences as well yeah if you guys want to share your experiences in the comments definitely can I was also thinking maybe as a thing in the future that I might set up like an email address or something where you guys can send us your creepy stories, whether they're paranormal or like if it was just something kind of spooky that happened and we can read them on the podcast. If that would be something you'd be cool with, Sammy. Oh, yes. I would love to do that. I mean, that would be awesome to read somebody else's um, experience, be able to share it. Sure. Yeah, I think I think that'd be cool. And then, you know, that's something special um i also do want to say that i'm trying to open like a patreon or a ko-fi or a something along those lines um but i do need your guys's input on like what you would want the perks to be so you know obviously i was thinking we could do something like uh where we shout you guys out in the podcast or in one of my other videos or my streams or something like that or I don't really know what else like we could maybe release uh the podcast early to patrons or something like that we're gonna try and do it where we record it every sunday and when i get it up i'll work on it (laughs) i'm not sure yet i'll have to figure out kind of how i want this to work logistically but usually Mm -hmm. sunday is gaming wifey date so (laughs) this is part of our date where we're just hanging out and having fun but yeah. uh yeah because you know i should mention that this one over here she's my gaming wifey and we call each other gaming wifeys because when we first started like hanging out together and stuff we like all the same things we play a lot of the same games sammy is my horror game finder <laughs> she is <laughs> she has introduced me to so many games or told me to play so many games that i absolutely love they're really scary so good job sammy <laughs> and (laughs) you're welcome and i know that when we first started like hanging out and stuff i was like oh she's like my gaming sister but for some reason that just didn't sound right 
And so then somebody said, no, no, she's their gaming wifey. And I was like, yes. And so ever since then, that's been the thing. Sammy is my gaming it's wifey. Stuck. Yep, it just stuck. We're gaming wifey mm -hmm. or gaming waifu. Sometimes we like to change it up a little bit. I mean, wifey, waifu are same thing in my eyes. But, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> who knows? But, uh, yeah, so we, we both really like share a love of the spooky and the horror and the paranormal so that's kind of why we thought we'd bring you this podcast where we just talk about spooky shit yeah i mean i think a lot of people can relate and enjoy you know all things of the spook i mean i think everybody likes a little bit of something that's spooky right um yeah everybody has their own little you know their own little experiences that can relate to stuff that we're talking about and i I mean, even if you guys have ideas, too, that you would like for us to do, like, feel free to, like, put that out there, too. You know, any ideas that you would like to see or want us to do, um, we would appreciate that, too. You know, we'll try our best to, you know, try try our best to get that done and see what we can come up with. Yeah, for sure. Like, if you guys have any, like she said, any ideas, you can put them in the comments. And I will also have my Discord link if you guys want to join the Discord and chat with us in there as well. We're both as active as we can be. During the week, I can't be too, too active, but I try my best to still talk to people and engage with my community as it is. Yeah, I'm very excited for this journey to yeah. see where it takes us with this, you know. I, I was super excited today to start this because I was like, oh, my God, I get to share scary stuff. I'm like, I'm so excited. I'm just I'm a weirdo like that. So um, it was very enjoyable to sit here and talk and, ex you know, um, share my experiences with you all. So, yeah. And to be with Gaming Wifey, like always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gaming Wifey dates are <laughs> taking a step up for spooky stories. <laughs> exactly I watch like out spooky <laughs> stuff we're coming through oh, we coming through <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah well um with that being said i guess we will end this episode around here um thank you guys so much though for hanging out with us for sticking around um sammy thank you for being my co-star in this podcast journey and thank you um to anybody that watches that watches my streams or any of my other content thank you guys so much for getting me to this goal this was a sub goal um i wanted to see if you guys wanted a spooky podcast and apparently you did so here we are um <laughs> very happy to be able to bring this to you and i thought it'd be kind of a fun little twist being that it's in vr chat but as i am a vtuber i figured it was quite appropriate <laughs> so here we mm -hmm. are i thought it'd be fun to have us both and then that way you know you can see us both you can like I feel like it's just more immersive and more interactive that way. Um, so I will be putting these yes. out on YouTube um, first and foremost. And then if you guys want me to upload to like I don't know, Spotify or SoundCloud or something else, um, let me or Sammy know and we can figure it out from there. I have no idea how to do that, but that doesn't mean I can't figure it out for you guys. <laughs> but I figured that YouTube would be the best place to start. Um, and then, like I said, if you guys are watching, you're watching. If you're just listening, that's cool too. And if you guys have any suggestions of what you would like us to do next, or even any just like constructive criticism, as long as you're nice about it, um, we'll take that too. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for mm -hmm. hanging out with us and chilling on this spooky journey of ours. Um, and I guess we will mm -hmm. see you guys next week. Yes, we'll see you next time for the spooky hour. No. Spooky hour. It was <laughs> nice. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Till next time. Bye. <laughs>